Just over an hour ago, the Federal Reserve announced it will leave interest rates unchanged. So what does one of the most vocal critics of the Fed have to say about this decision and then the possibility that the agency will expand its powers? Republican Congressman Ron Paul of Texas is a member of the Joint Economic Committee and the Financial Services Committee. He also wrote the book on the subject, literally. His book is titled, End the Fed. He joins me now in an exclusive interview from Capitol Hill. Welcome. Thank you for being here, Representative. Thank you, Liz. Nice to be with you. Good to have you. Well, we, we uh, had the Fed meeting, which wrapped up, and needless to say, nothing happened. They didn't do anything right here. Do you think that the Fed's exit strategy is on par with what really should be done? I don't think they have one. I mean, it, it just really is totally bewildering that a country and billions of dollars can be held in check and waiting for the chairman to say, well, is it going to say extended period of time or not? I mean, how can one person have this much power over the monetary system? No, he has no plan. Uh, you know, I was looking back over some statistics to find out if the Fed ever shrunk their balance sheet, and very, very rarely. And the balance sheet is so huge, and he's not even willing to say, you know, maybe someday in the future I might, uh, I might raise interest rates. They're not even talking about raising. They're just saying, possibility in the future so no he is locked in uh, with a lot of inflation and by by continuing the policy uh, he is doing something but what, what are you talking about inflation, inflation. representative and th there are no signs of inflation just yet there's no wage inflation because we have such high unemployment well, yeah, but you're talking about prices. Uh, inflation is the increase in the supply of money and credit. And then that subsequently leads to higher prices in some areas, like in education and in medical care. So you don't have to have a, a CPI or wages to go up to have inflation. I think this is a misdiagnosis, a, a, a misdefinition to say inflation is only rising prices. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of price increases, but, but the point is, We've already had the inflation. The money supply has been increased. Now we're just ready for uh, and waiting for the inflationary expectations, which is psychological. It's subjective. And you don't know when that's going to turn on. You don't know how to measure velocity of money. And that's all sitting there. And if you ever get this economy going, that's what you're going to have, an explosion of prices. Well, it'll, it'll be an explosion of prices. Well, just as very smart investors, say, for example, like Warren Buffett and some members of Congress on both sides of the aisle support him and say he actually helped save the financial system. You, of course, have been a real critic of Fed Chief Ben Bernanke. In fact, recently, we couldn't help but notice on February 24th, the last time Chairman Bernanke testified on the Hill, you two had an exchange that generated quite a bit of attention. Let's watch for a minute and then we'll talk more about it. It has been reported in the past that uh, during the 1980s that the Fed actually facilitated a $5.5 billion loan to Saddam Hussein and he then bought weapons from our military industrial complex and also that is when he invested in a nuclear reactor. That money was not appropriated by the Congress as the Constitution says. Also there's been reports that the cash used in the Watergate scandal which came through the Federal Reserve. And when investigators back in those years tried to find out, they were always stonewalled and, and, and we couldn't get the information. Would you grant that the American people deserve to know whether the Federal Reserve has been involved in this and what kind of shenanigans they're involved with foreign countries and foreign central banks and, and find out possibly you're working right now to bail out Greece for all we know? Congressman, I, these specific allegations you've made I think are absolutely bizarre and I have absolutely no knowledge of anything remotely like what you just described. So, Representative, I'm pretty sure you guys aren't dining inside the Beltway at those fancy <laughs> restaurants there. Uh, clearly, there is uh, arguing here between you two, but is what you are saying just a longer way of saying that you want more transparency from the Fed going forward? That's right, and uh, even the bill that uh, Dodd has just presented, he's giving more power to the Fed and no, no auditing procedure. So I, I would say the, uh, the problems are getting much worse uh, rather than better. And uh, it is to me so crucial that we do know what's going on. I mean, literally, he, the one thing that they really want to protect are their agreements with other central banks and other governments. Well, you know, uh, what keeps them from extending a loan to another central bank and, and credit? and tell them to buy up treasury bills to keep interest rates low. So we, don't even, we can't even measure what the Fed is doing directly because we look at their balance sheet, but they literally have the ability to extend credit to other central banks and have
have them buy Treasury bills. And, you know, that might be the reason that foreigners are still buying our Treasury bill. But this this is uh, not a solution. You say that uh, this that he saved the economy, but that's sort of like saving, well, uh, saying that, uh, you know, you give that. a drug addict a shock, uh, a shot, and he feels better. So well, the economy does feel better, but we didn't you know, save it. Let's go back to Chris Dodd's new plan for financial regulation changes, and, and it would give the Fed quite a bit more power, uh, certainly right. as far as consumer financial protection is concerned, but also giving them oversight of the largest banks, ones that are 50 billion plus. So uh, on, on balance, though, it also appears to rein in risks that financial institutions could take so that they don't get into trouble again and need the taxpayers' shoulders to stand on again. Is this a bill you could support if it had tweaks to it? No, not, not, not at all, because you're not addressing the real problem. The real problem is the Federal Reserve has been designed and it has operated since its very beginning. It's the lender of last resort. That means that there will always be people too big to fail. This idea that you can regulate away the imbalances of the malinvestment and the debt problems that we have by just having more regulators there, I think that's very deceptive. Uh, you have to deal with the system of money if you want to prevent the bubbles from forming, and they're struggling right now to, to create the next bubble. They're trying to build more houses. Can you imagine trying to stimulate the housing business and keeping prices up? Well, in a correction, you want the prices to come down, and you, and, and you want the market to clear itself. But uh, you don't want to stimulate housing. So all these uh, derivatives dealing with housing, mortgages, and securities, they haven't been liquidated. They have been all bought up by the taxpayer. They're held on the books, and this prolongs the agony and prolongs the, the, the correction. So therefore, we can expect this to go on for a long time, even if you have blips and you get a government statistic that says you're feeling better. But I'll tell you what. What? The people who are unemployed and now the Don't government feel admits it, at all. But what it's, about, they're at 20 percent. Well, <laughs> what if we simply said, you guys will fail. If you get yourselves into trouble again, you will fail. Now, Chris Dodd would argue that that's going to be in this bill. Good luck. No, it's not going to happen because you'd have to repeal the Federal Reserve Act to do that because the Fed is there to prop up bad debt. And when the banks get into trouble, the banks, the Federal Reserve, that's their whole purpose is to keep the system together by making sure the bankruptcies don't uh, uh, just, you know, uh, catch hold and, and precipitate a, a, a true Except if there's a resolution authority yeah. that's built into the system to break them up in an orderly way, such as we had with the SNL crisis. Yeah, I'm sure the government can do things very orderly. Like that'd be like breaking up the post office in an orderly fashion. They're not. They're not going to do it that way. They are allowing the bubbles to be formed because it's it's all based on a flawed concept of money and this idea that one person can sit in a room and come out and say, "Well, we're going to continue this for an indefinite period," and the market say, ah, "We feel better now yeah, well, because right. Bernanke's going to inflate the currency forever." The market is up on that news, it will, isn't that? Uh, it will not last forever. That's one thing I can guarantee you. Representative Ron Paul, please come again. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's an independent thinker, that's for sure. Today at